When I was 11 years old, I came to America from Ukraine, and when I was 13, I, I had a dream to get a bike. I'm not gonna lie to you, uh, we live in Ukraine pretty sheltered, and honestly, I never had a bike to my own. We had a bike, but we had uh, three other brothers that we had to share. So, uh, <laughs> as an immigrant, we came to America, you know, land of the free, you know, land of opportunities. I'm like, I'm gonna get myself a bike. <laughs> So at age of 13, uh, I like, you know, started looking on uh, yard sales, and I found this bike, this orange mongoose. I mean, if you guys know, I mean, that was a legit. And I asked the price, the price was about $200. And I, you gotta know, I was 13 years old. I mean, like, there's no way I have that kind of money. It was a fall, and the leaves, leaves start falling. So I'm like, I'm gonna start raking some leaves. So I grabbed, uh, I grabbed my cousin, Dmitry, and we just, every Saturday for like a couple months, we just would go and rake some leaves. I remember I had uh, about $150. I had, I need to get $50. And so we come this, to this house and it was, the yard was packed with leaves. I'm like, this is it. I mean, this is where we can make some serious dough. <laughs> this is where the cheese at, you know? So we knock on the door, you know, and this grandma comes out on a motorized cart. I'm like, this is it, this is, this is a gold pot. There's no way she's gonna rake these leaves. So you guys understand, I'm in America two, two years. Uh, the only words I know is a high buy in Coca-Cola, you know? So my communication skills was like, can I, you know? She's like, oh yeah, yeah, you know? She, she starts smiling, I'm like, I'm like, this is going good. So we, you know, we start raking, it was from the morning. I, I kid you not, it took us about seven hours. So we talked about money, you know, we like, you know, money. So I strolled on fingers and I swear she said $100. I mean, I was the happy. She came out, gave us a cookies and milk. I'm like, this is going good. This day is going to end really good and I'm going to get the bike. To my greatest surprise, she comes out and brings out $10. Honestly, I got heartbroken. I was like, I'm an immigrant. I just got taken advantage. I got ripped off by an old sweet lady on a motorcycle cart. And I'm like, did not even see that coming, you know? So I remember looking at my, uh, my cousin, I'm like, dude, we worked like eight hours, made like 25 cents an hour, <laughs> you know? So I'm like, I gave her the cookies. I'm like, let's get out of here, you know? So end the story, I got my bike. Six months later, summer hit. I was going from the pool, I was super hungry and uh, with my cousin, and I had no money. And my cousin was smart, and he's like, I'll give you a Big Mac if you give me your bike. And I kid you not, I sold my $200 Mongoose for a Big Mac. Yeah, and I'm still going through some healing right now. I mean, it's been... <laughs> but what I'm saying, the next year comes around, we go again, we go by the, her house again. And my cousin looks at me, he's like, should we do it? We found no work whole day. I'm like, dude, you want to work whole day for 10 bucks? And I looked at him, I said, you know, it's not worth it. I'd rather be broke, but I will not work for 10 bucks, 25 cents an hour. Where am I going with this? You know, we as Christians, we're called to witness and be evangelized. What's a evangel evangelism? It's sharing your faith at work, at home, everywhere you go. You're a Christian, you're the light. You're supposed to shine in the dark. But you know, I'm not gonna come as a kind of depressing note, but only 2% of Christians actively witness or share their faith. The question is I have is what are 98 are doing? Honestly, I'm gonna tell you this story. The reason why many Christians don't evangelize because they think it's not worth it. The story, Matthew chapter 19, Jesus is chilling with his disciples, right? And Peter gets up and he says, Jesus, we left everything, and we're following you. What are we going to get? I was like, when I read, I was like, wow, that's kind of bold, Peter, you know? Jesus like, hey, what are we going to get, bro? <laughs> we're following you. Kind of you know, selfish, you know, asking Jesus. But I was surprised what Jesus said. You know, I'm going to read you. It's Matthew chapter 19, verse 27. And Jesus says, and everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wives or children or lands and houses for my name's sake shall receive hundredfold and inherit eternal life. 
I believe many Christians believe the lie that when you take care of God's business, God's going to fail to take care of yours. You know, Jesus, uh, Peter said, Jesus, we are following you. First of all, let's get something done. Following Jesus is not coming to church on Sunday once a, once a, once a week, listen to the sermon and go home. Jesus said to the disciples, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. So following Jesus Christ, it's winning souls and making disciples. So, uh, so you know, and Peter says, Jesus, we left everything. We left our homes, our our you know things everything we followed you he meant that in this scripture he showed that hey we want to focus on your goal to win souls and make disciples and i believe that many people trade god's commission for their ambition because they want to get their stuff first they want to get their career and they think that i don't want to do god's thing but in the same scripture you know, Jesus says, but many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. After saying that, he's saying to his disciples, just because you left everything, follow me, my purpose is to win souls and make disciples. It seems right now that you guys are losing, that you are last. And all those people there, you know, never go to church, just come once a week, never win souls, never witness. They seem like they have all this time pursuing their education, their job. And they seem right now they're first. My Bible says many though who are first will be last and those who are last will be first i want to encourage you when you take care of god's business when you go out you witness god's gonna take care of your business and you will see at the end you will win amen you know it's funny that in the luke chapter 9 uh, chapter 9 verse 24 says whoever will save his life will lose it but whoever will lose his life for christ will gain it you know in christianity we gotta hold things backwards the first will be last. You know, it's better to give than receive. You know, to be great, you got to be the servant. So I, I encourage you guys, don't ever fall for this lie that, you know, spend this time to come to church. You know, Sunday, Wednesday, come to morning prayers, come to night prayers, stand for the gap, for revival, for the souls. You are working for God. And when God sees that, God will help you in your daily lives, in your daily decisions. And when you go out and witness and share your faith, God sees that. And God promises that maybe you are right now lost, that you will end up being first and you will be blessed. So I encourage you. Our church purpose is to win souls and make disciples. Every person in our church is not a visitor, is a leader. Amen.